imagine sitting at your desk kind of like this and you sit down to go and, you know, check a lesson or look at the materials that you're needing for something that's coming up in your near future. So you open up your Google Drive and you lose your ever loving shiz looking for things. No, no way. Not you, right? Duh. If Google Drive and its organization has ever been triggering for you, well, and that's something you've probably experienced, then this video is for you. We're just gonna jump straight into it. Here we go. Well, hey there, I am Mindy Rice of teachautomission.com and the Sustainable Teacher Podcast and this YouTube channel that is also The Sustainable Teacher. And I'm so glad that you're here. If you've been around for a while, thanks so much for coming back. I'm so honored that you would spend some of your very valuable time with me. But if you're new to my channel, welcome. I think you're going to love this video either way. But please, if you could do me a quick favor, it'll take like three clicks. Click to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and then click that little notification bell because that will make sure that you do not miss a single video that I have coming out every single week. I'm working on some more, but you know, it's light. Either way, I'm so glad you're here. I want you to come on over and join me on the Instagram because that's where you can see more behind the scenes and real life stuff. But no matter where you find me, whether it's here on this platform or on Instagram or Facebook or my podcast, it's all about helping you reinvigorate your love of teaching so that you can be effective with your teachers, but also have a personal life. And I wanna help you build the sustainable systems that allow you to have both, because we are all about having both here as educators that Teach on a Mission, that's B-O-T-H, both be effective with your students and have a personal life. So that's what this video is gonna continue to help you do, and I hope you're here for it. Let's get started. Okay, so in this video, we are going to be all up in Google Drive. And if you want to be watching it and letting it play while you also have a tab open that is your Google Drive, I would highly recommend that. You're gonna see me kind of full screen here, but you're also gonna see a little bit of my screen. So either way, I hope that's helpful for you. I'm hoping that me, you, huh, you hearing me as you're doing the things in Google Drive is what is helpful, but I will also have some visual aids for you and hopes that seeing it makes it easier to apply in your own Google Drive organization as well. So first up, my number one best tip when it comes to organizing your Google Drive, right? It's all about the best Google Drive organization hacks for teachers. The number one tip is to number your folders and documents. Not just your folders, but your documents as well. Right, I hope you don't mind that as we've kind of switched the view here so that you can see my screen and me showing you all of the things that I've also switched camera and microphones. It's just easier for me to do it this way. So, <laughs> okay, here we go. So <clears throat> if you're anything like me, you don't think or organize usually when it comes to computer files alphabetically. You just don't. And Google Drive, and really on your PC as well, um, on your, you know, your hard drive that is your computer, it's going to do so alphabetically or numerically, right? So that's not always fortunate or, you know, beneficial, but there's ways that we can take advantage of it. So you're just seeing one of my personal email or Google Drives here. But what I'm going to do is kind of take you through how I do this. So recommendation number one, like I was saying, is to number absolutely everything. So let's start with our folders. I know it's kind of weird, but in Google Drive, 10 is actually going to come before one, or I'm sorry, it's gonna come before two because anything that has a one first just goes with all the ones, <laughs> okay? So it'll be one and then all tens and teens and then two and then all your 20s and all that kind of stuff. So. I say that to say not only number it, but make sure that you use two digit numbering. So I'm going to name my courses, okay? So I taught American history was one of my courses and I'm clicking to create that folder and I want it to pop up first because that is the course that I have the most students in. Now I'm going to do another folder and it's going to be 02 and I'm going to call it AP Psychology because it's the next um, most time consuming, let's say, course that I have. And then I'm going to do another folder for another class that I teach. 
or have taught, let's say. So it, you wanna do this with your classes, right? Make one whole folder for your classes. Then within that folder, do the same. So number your folders. I'm actually going to do a zero zero because I always have a folder for my course intro, which really is just like the first maybe few days or a week, however long it takes you before you get to content. For me, that was normally just a few days. So I plop things in here like get to know you activities and my syllabus and parent um, information sheet and student information sheet and all of that. So then the next one, zero one, is going to be unit one. So let's call that founding documents. I like to put the unit number as well as the name of the unit in that. That's personal preference, so totally up to you. Again, gonna go with another one. So let's, we skipped all of the Civil War and went straight to Industrial Revolution <clears throat> in our American history. Okay, so I've got my folders kind of set up that way. Now I'm going to go into, let's say, unit one. Now, you probably already have all of these files. You just want to create this structure for your folders first, right? Well, another recommendation that I have is to use a similar organization for your files. Okay, within each of your, just a quick recap, we created my course folders, went in there and I'm in unit one of American history, right? And then created those unit folders. Now we're within the unit folder. Here's a recommendation that I have for you. Your most used document or documents, I'm gonna say it should only be one. If it's not just one most used document, I'm just gonna say that I think you might be doing it wrong. Meaning if you have multiple documents that are multiple lesson plans, that's a heck of a lot more clicking than is necessary. Um, I'm, I'm going to be talking about, um, it's actually in the next video, digital planning and how to make sure that you don't have hella documents when it comes to your lesson plans. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But your most used document, which for me was my unit guide. So this would already be existing if I were using, like showing you my old stuff, um, but I am not doing that at this moment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use an asterisk, okay? Unit guide, um, I'm gonna put unit one guide founding documents, right? That's the, the unit that we are inside of. And I put that little asterisk there which means that it will always show up there no matter how many more documents, it'll be up at the top. Now, if I have any folders in here, that will show up above my unit guide, but I'm putting an asterisk there because U is at the bottom of the alphabet, <laughs> imagine that, meaning it's gonna be under almost everything else that I create for this unit. And I want it at the top because it's the most clicked, most used document in this folder. So I put an asterisk at the beginning and it'll always pop up at the top. I like to do this for files instead of numbers because the numbers kind of throw me off in the naming of files. So just a little tip for you there. Now, tip number two, if you don't want to create further subfolders, cause I, that's kind of a rabbit hole. You could create 50 different folders within folders, right? But if you're not wanting to do that, you want to do this next tip. So tip number two is have naming conventions. And you'll see that I kind of have one already on the screen, which is unit one or unit blank guide and the title of the unit, right? That unit guide is where literally everything is linked, but everything is planned out for my entire unit. Now, you're gonna wanna do this with other things. So you're gonna wanna have naming conventions that tells your brain right off exactly what it is from the start. For instance, if I'm going to create a test, okay, I'm going to title that boy unit one test, right? Founding documents, something like that, right? So now it's in here, it's the test. Have the word of what it is at the beginning of the title or the file's name. Okay, so test is there at the beginning. Guys, I don't even necessarily know that I like unit one there. Um, maybe it'll be test, unit one, right? Or lesson plan, unit one, day one, something like that. Or it could be student activity, uh, 
primary source document analysis for causes of the Civil War, something like that, right? Um, so have those naming conventions set up because then once you're in your files, it doesn't take your brain reading every single title when you know you're only looking for a test, right? Or maybe it's a quiz, right? You're probably only gonna have one test per unit, but let's say you have multiple quizzes and you have three of them, well now in your list of 20 files within this document, you only have to look at three of them to know which one you're looking for. Okay, the next tip that I have for you, tip number three, is to use the info doc, okay? Now this is more of a um, hack for you when using Google Drive, not necessarily how to organize it. By default, it probably shows up, but if your screen looks anything like mine where it's just the list of the files, or maybe you have it like in the, the little cubes like that, um, you wanna click on, I always have mine in list, and I feel like, in list mode, this little info dot, the little I, is gonna be even more helpful. As I look at this view though, this is nice. I get to see straight off exactly what each of these things are and don't even have to look at the titles. I don't even have to read the titles to know what the document is. But if you're in list view, which is what I often, I'm often in that view as well, make sure you have the little info dot, that little eye in the top right hand corner, make sure you have that clicked because it gives you that preview. But here's the other thing, you can also click on activity and see who else has been doing things inside of that document. So especially if it's a shared document, let's say it's a unit guide or plan of some sort that you share with your team of teachers who also teach American history, for instance, you can see who has done what. Not that you're wanting to be like all big brother and stuff about things. I don't know, maybe you are, but probably not. But let's say that there was a mistake made or, oh my gosh, where, did, what happened to that thing that I had on here? It probably means you have too many people on there editing that document, P.S. But you, want, you then can go in here and just get a quick glance of most recent activity on the document, which you may find quick and helpful. All right, tip number four is color coding your folders. Now, this one may seem a bit superficial, but since I've done this, since I've color coded my folders, I won't ever undo it. <laughs> I, I just really like it. And here's the thing, shout out to all my psych nerds. Our brains really like patterns, right? It will use patterns in a way to make shortcuts for our thinking. So much like naming conventions is a pattern, so are colors, so use patterns. Now, if you're an elementary teacher, color code each subject area, right? Same for middle school, high school teachers, you could color code each course you teach, but not just the Google Drive. You could make those colors match your actual physical existing color coding, whether that's with printed out stuff that you have in your binder, color coding, your notebooks, turn-in bins, labels, calendar events on Google Calendar, there's a thing for you, you could do that. You could have your folders in your Google Drive, that color match the color of your calendar if you're using Google Calendar. I do this with a project management software that I use called Asana, that things are color coded and they match my colors of folders in my Google Drive as well. So I'm showing you yet another one of my Google Drives because I have quite a few of them, but this is my business one. You can see that there's colors of those folders. Those colors match the projects or the colors on my project management system. They can also match your, like I was saying, your Google Calendar. Now, a little bonus tip here I wanna show you is that you can use emojis in your titles and i did that and and do this in my main project management software as well for my podcast versus my youtube content right i use a little microphone a little video it just helps me see a difference could this be kind of extra and not really necessary sure but if you have some kind of convention there almost like a naming convention that pattern could absolutely help you okay tip number five and I'm actually going to stay in my YouTube folder here, just showing you some of the content that I create is actually twofold. Number one is make a template and call it that. So for instance, unit guide, which this is kind of a spoiler alert for our next video that's coming out sometime soon, is that you wanna make a template for your unit guide 
don't have any of the actual content in there, just have the bones, right? So for instance, this is my template for my YouTube video outline, right? And all I have to do is right click this bad boy and make a copy of it and then put the title of my next video in it, okay? So that's kind of the first part of number five. Second part of number five is when you make a copy of something, oftentimes let's say it's like your unit guide. Well, you need that to go into a different unit, right? You need that to go into a different unit. Instead of clicking on this and then clicking on the little folder. So if I open this, I can actually click on um, this little folder here and move it, okay? I could do that. Another way to do it would be to click this little drop down area arrow next to my drive and then get in the folder, the next drop down area of that folder and even further on down, right? You could do that if you needed to and then click and drag that bad boy where it needs to go. All right, so there are your five best Google Drive hacks for organizing all things in your Google Drive for teachers, but I have a little bonus for you, and I use this quite often, especially when I'm trying to get to something that I made last year, and maybe it was only something that I used one time, and I just am forgetting what I named it, whatever. When all else fails and you can't find something, you thought you put it in the right folder, but you just didn't, just search it, right? Type any word that may be in that document's title or even in the document itself, right? And click in that search bar up at the top of Google Drive and just search for it, right? Now, you might not have any clue of what you named it, but just think of the topic because Google Drive is gonna search everything, right? But then here's the thing, it's going to auto populate like a drop down list for you and it would be really easy to click on any of those. Don't. Type in the term or the topic that you're looking for and click enter. Don't click any of those one things on the list that auto populates because it'll only take you there and it won't show you everything, right? So otherwise just click enter and you'll see all the possibilities of items that have anything to do with the topic that you're looking for and hopefully it shows up on that list. All right, teacher friend, I hope this has been helpful for you. I'm gonna do a quick recap here of the five best Google Drive hacks for organizing for teachers. Number one, number your folders and documents, right? I like to asterisk the document, but number them. Use the 00, 0102, put the zero first because then 10 and 11 and 12 will be in their proper place later on. Naming conventions. Tip number two, use naming conventions. So if it's a test, put test first and then what test it is. If it's a lesson plan, put lesson plan first and then the title, right? Third is to use that info dot because then you can see the contents of the document before you actually double click on it to open it. And as well on the activity, who's messed with it, who's changed things, anything like that. Number four, color code your folders. It might seem superficial, but our brains really like patterns. Bonus, you could also put emojis in the names of your folders and even your documents. Lastly, make a copy of a document, but then just drag it where it goes rather than clicking the little move folder icon and finding where it goes that way. And then a little bonus when all else fails, just search for it. That really should be your, your last resort. Hopefully you have your file systems and all of that, but I like to search for it sometimes and then I can see where I put it and be like, oh yeah, that's where it is. Now I remember. Okay, if this video has really resonated with you and be like, yes, I can do this. This is manageable. This is sustainable for my daily teaching life. I would so love it if you would leave me, leave me a comment letting me know. Um, also, you could let me know, hey, this I really liked, but I would really love to see X, Y, Z if you could talk about or explain this or let me know any questions that you have because I love interacting with you guys, any of my viewers and knowing what it is that you're wanting to see in the future. All right, stay tuned for our next video coming out here really soon and I'll see you then. Bye for now.